Yo, what is up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna do something different. We're actually not gonna be working on a car, but we are gonna be talking automotive. So what I'm gonna do today, I actually had one of my subscribers comment on one of my last videos. I think it was a fuel pump video where I was doing uh, some checks on a relay circuit. And he asked me if I could do a video on how a relay works. Focus. So I actually have a relay here. This one's taken apart. And we're gonna go over how it works, what it does, what it's good for, how to check them, how to test them, how to tell if it's good or bad. And after this video, you guys are gonna be able to do your own relay testing. You're gonna be able to bypass relays. You're gonna be able to check if they're good or bad. You're gonna be able to wire in extra circuits if you need to do that. And I'm gonna show you all that in this video. So let's go. All right, so check this out. Here we have a basic automotive relay. Now, for the most part, every relay has four terminals. You have pin 30, pin 87. Whatever the big load is, is gonna be on sites 30 and 87. Now, for the most part, pin 30 is gonna be your, your power side, and then pin 87 will go out and feed the component that you're working with. Now, pin 85 and 86, these are your control side. This right here, pin 85 and 86, that is a coil. Pin 85 and 86 are what controls this coil right here. So, pin 85 for the most part is a power, 86 is a ground, but you can switch them around, this is no problem. All we need here, we just need to activate the coil. Once this coil activates, it creates a magnetic field and then this switch closes and then the power that's here on pin 30 will travel through go out to pin 87 and out to whatever you're controlling whether it's a fuel pump ac compressor fan blower motor whatever it is so you can see that on the side of this relay uh, that's what they're showing you here 85 and 86 there's a coil once a magnetic field is created in here it pulls the switch it makes contact and then we have current flow from pin 30 to 87. Now if it doesn't have a diagram on the side of the relay, it'll have numbers on the bottom of the pins. I think you can see that on this relay. On this style relay, you see how these three are facing the same way, how they are parallel with each other. You can see that pin 30, 85, and 86 are always going to be parallel. The one that comes perpendicular, that's going to be pin 87. This right here is 87A in the middle and that's usually not used. So anytime you see a relay like this and for if for whatever reason it's not numbered or not marked on you uh, for you, then what you, what you can do is know that these three facing the same way, the two that are side by side, those are your control side, 85 and 86, and then the ones that are perpendicular to each other, that's pin 30 and pin 87. Pin 87 will always go to your load side, which is uh, your pump, your fan, your light, whatever you're controlling. So if you ever need to jump a relay and bypass it, you're going to have to jump pin 30, put a wire to it, and uh, to pin 87 at the, at the relay box. So one test you can do on the relay to make sure that it's working on the relay itself is a resistance check across pin 85 and pin 86. So let me show you this. Re I'm gonna, I got a couple relays here that I'm going to show you just so we can see different resistance. Alright, so the very first test you want to do is a resistance test of the coil to make sure that the coil is good. Now this is just bench testing the relay. This is not testing the relay on the car or testing the relay circuit. Alright, so the first thing, these three pins are parallel and I remember that two parallel ones that are across from each other, that is going to be our control side, that is the coil. So if we look at this one, we got about 72 ohms on that relay and this is a... It says Pro Link Relay. Okay, so that's one. Let's look at uh, one from GM. This one came out of a, a GM product. So let's look at the terminals. Set it up like that. The three that are parallel to each other, we go across the two that are across from each other, and we have we've got about 84 ohms of resistance. So that coil is intact. There's no problems there. Actually, we got about 75 ohms. Okay, now you should have resistance across that one. You should not have resistance across pin 30 and 87 like I'm touching them here. If you do have resistance across these two, that means that that switch in there is stuck closed. And this one is good. That, you shouldn't have resistance across these two until you have a power and a ground on this side which activates the coil which allows current to flow from pin 30 to pin 87 and out to whatever you're controlling. 
So that's the second relay. Let me test this one. This one is this is the one that says dual tech electronics. So set it down. Look at the three pins that are parallel. And we go to the two that are across from each other. And we have about 73 ohms. Now let's check the ones that are opposites, pin 30 and 87. Okay, I'm across pin 30 and 87 and I've got nothing. Now if I go across pin 30 and 87A, I should have some kind of reading because this one has five pins. And you can see on the ohm meter I got about one ohm more resistance. Now you're, you're, you're able to see that on the diagram here on the side. The contacts across pin 30 and 87A. 87A is the pin in the middle. You can see that on the diagram that th that switch is touching the other one. So you should have some kind of resistance there and you do. So once that uh, once this coil activates, that switch will switch over to pin 87 and then we should have continuity between 30 and 87. So now that we check the resistance of the coil on the relay, we can actually energize it by adding power and ground to terminal 85 to pins 85 and 86 and see if the relay clicks. So when the relay clicks, what you're actually seeing is these contacts being pulled in through magnetism and uh, just because a relay clicks doesn't mean that the relay is actually good so first let me energize the relay and let me show you what that looks like so i got a i got a positive wire here and i got a negative wire here that are connected to a jumper box so i'm going to connect these across terminal 85 and 86 of the relay so you should hear the relay click and you should be able to see the contacts moving all right, so that doesn't necessarily mean that the relay is good. That just means that the coil is energizing, the contacts are moving, but we still got to check if there's continuity from pin 30 to pin 87 when the relay is activated. So I'm going to set my digital multimeter over to continuity, or you can set it on ohms either way. And I'm going to take one lead of the multimeter to pin 30 and the other one to pin 87 okay so that's pin 30 pin 87 that's a power feed and now I have a ground right here this so this ground is on the control side this one can be a computer it can be a module it can be a switch it it's whatever it's controlling the ground for the control side of the relay so once I touch this here you should hear the relay click and you should hear um, my multimeter beep indicating that there's continuity between pin 30 and 87 and that indicates that this really is good so here we go so that's a test that you need to do on the bench with the relay out of the car testing the relay out of the car only tells you that the relay is good it does not tell you anything else about the relay circuit about the control side of the circuit, the low side of the circuit. This just tells you that the relay is good. Now it doesn't matter what kind of relay you use. You can use this style of relay or you can use this style of relay. This is another style of relay that you're going to be seeing. Now this is the one that you guys saw on my uh, Hyundai Sonata fuel pump video. This is the same style that was on there. And let me see if I can get you there. Focus. Now on this relay you're not going to see pin 85 and 86. 30 and 87 what you're gonna see here let me see if I can oh here it is you can see it on this one 3 and 5 are the equivalent of 30 and 87 so if you need to bypass the relay these two are the control side these two are the load side and this one right here is the one that goes out to the load this one right here is gonna have a power feed then once the relay activates that switch will close the power feed will run from pin 3 to pin 5 and out to whatever you're controlling. Now, essentially on the inside, it's the same thing. Here's the coil. You can see the switch right here. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and activate it so that you can see what it looks like when you got a good power and a good ground on the relay. So, I'm going to put a power here. I'm going to activate it by touching the ground to the other pin. And you can see it activating. Okay. So this really is good, the coil is good, it's making contact, but what you really gotta check is if that power from, from pin five is actually making out to pin three and out to your load. Essentially it's the same thing. Now this one came out of GM, and you can see right here there's a diagram. 
it shows you that pin 3 and 5 are the switch and pin 2 and 1 are the coil side so every time you see a switch on a relay those are the pins that you're able to jump now you got to be careful that you don't jump the wrong ones because whatever is controlling whatever is controlling that relay if you accidentally jump it then there's a good chance that you're gonna fry whether it be a module or a switch or whatever uh, just go from the pin that's in the middle of the relay the two that are on the top like if you look at this the pin that's in the middle that's going to be your power feed and then you're able to jump it to the one that's outside these two are outside on the outside of the relay so just know that these are your control side um so that right there is how you test the relay that's how you read the outside of the box on a relay this this one came from a gm car i think this was bad remember just because the relay is clicking that means that this right here is closing but that something else could be wrong within the relay that's not allowing that current to flow and go out to whatever your your load that you're trying to control is so there it is that's pin uh, three and five that you can jump while you're working on the car all right guys so that's how you test a relay on the bench it's a completely different test than, than testing it on the car on the car you're gonna have to check the control side the load side um, but that's how that's how you do it out of the car so you have to understand the basics before you can go test it on the car and hopefully you guys like what you saw in this video hopefully you guys like what you saw in this video and if you did don't forget to leave me a like if you want to see something else drop it in the comments the reason I did this video was because one of my subs actually asked me to do this for him how the relay works and whatnot so pretty simple it's just two circuits inside a little box one's the control one's the load side one controls the other it's a small current controlling a higher current very very important to know how this works <laughs> on a lot of newer cars they're starting to get rid of these and they're starting to build the relays into circuit boards into the modules and in those type of cars these relays are not serviceable but it's still the same it's still the same concept so hopefully you guys liked it leave me a comment down below what else you want to see and I'll make it happen for you guys now there there will be a part two to this video I'm gonna show you guys how to test this on the car and how to check the the relay circuits at the relay box and that's it that's it for this one guys. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.